Welcome to our uh, teaching video on negative feedback and uh, tropic uh, hormones. So uh, negative feedback is something you're, you're going to see often, so we thought we'd better put a teaching video on there just so you're able to address that when it comes up into a test format and that. Uh, again, negative feedback simply, and I know there's a complex definition of this on your, uh, in your textbook and that, but basically it's the shut off mechanism. Once a hormone has performed its job, we need to, weigh, we need to find a way to shut that system off to keep it in homeostasis. So that's what negative feedback is. Again, simply shut off um, mechanism. Uh, uh, tropic or tropic hormones, we'll discuss that in a little bit there. Okay, so uh, very uh, typical to see these type of questions. You're going to see them on your midterm and in your final, uh, but you will see a dotted line. The dotted line represented here by number four and number five is negative feedback. They often show that with the dotted line. So let's do uh, an example of negative feedback. First of all, we're just going to look at the normal mechanism for the release of ADH. Okay, and then we'll see how we have to shut that system off once uh, ADH accomplish, accomplishes its job. Okay, so first thing, body dehydrated, uh, not enough water in the blood, blood pressure down, uh, not getting enough water, not drinking enough water, we're dehydrated. So this is the system that's uh, initiated when our body is dehydrated. Uh, hypothalamus uh, is the detector of this. It uh, sends a nerve impulse to the posterior pituitary. And again, posterior pituitary, if you look back in our notes, um, posterior pituitary is kind of part of the nervous system because it's stimulated by the hypothalamus through a nerve impulse, not a hormone. Okay, And of course, this topic, by the way, is topic four. Negative feedback is topic four, page six of our notes. So posterior pituitary, once, it's, uh, um, once the hypothalamus sends it the nerve impulse, it releases the posterior pituitary ADH. ADH then targets the kidneys and it causes increased reabsorption of water. So we're gonna have less urine, more concentrated uh, urine, but less urine, uh, and we're gonna retain some of that water. Okay, and of course that rehydrates the body. So ADH now has accomplished its job. What we need to do is we need to shut it down, right? We don't wanna keep reabsorbing out of the kidney, so we have to, at some point, get ADH back under homeostasis. So high levels are detect of ADH are detected by the hypothalamus and the pituitary in this case. So again, you can see that that's the dotted line, high ADH, uh, hypothalamus detects that. Hypothalamus then sends another nerve impulse to the posterior pituitary and pituitary stops releasing ADH and we get it back under homeostasis once the job is completed. Okay, so uh, ADH is not a tropic hormone. Most of the posterior pituitary hormones are not tropic or tropic. So what tropic hormones are, are a hormone that's released by a gland that will cause another gland to release another hormone. Okay, and again, that definition is just in your, I believe that one is in topic three of your notes where it talks about the uh, tropic hormones. Okay, so in this case, uh, if we just go over this, we can see that it is not that. If we have ADH here, let's just draw this out. Uh, hypothalamus releases, again, this was a nerve impulse to the posterior pit, our pituitary. Posterior pituitary, we said release, this is this number two, released ADH. It targets, we said, the kidney. But the kidney's not releasing another hormone here. All the kidney is doing, it's reabsorbing more water out of the kidney, back into the bloodstream, okay? So uh, this is not a tropic hormone because the kidney's not releasing a hormone. Okay, does that make sense? So that's, again, what the tropic hormone it is. Most posterior pituitary hormones, as we say, are not tropic hormones. So let's take an example of something that is a tropic hormone, and let's also take a look at negative feedback. In this case, we're gonna take a look at negative feedback of TSH. Now this is something that you're gonna address in the next topic, but we're gonna go over it really quickly now, just so we can show negative feedback and also uh, the tropic hormone uh, concept here as well. So hypothalamus sends a, in this case, 
a RH, which is a releasing hormone, to, in this case, the anterior. Oops. Pituitary. And if you go back into our topic two, where we talked about the difference between an anterior pituitary and the posterior pituitary, anterior pituitary is part of the endocrine system because it does take the hypothalamus to send a releasing hormone to initiate the anterior pituitary to release, in this case, TSH. TSH, of course, is thyroid stimulating hormone. So just like it says in the name, it's going to stimulate the thyroid. And in this case, the thyroid is going to release thyroxin. And thyroxin, what this does is increase metabolism. Cell metabolism. Okay, you're going to burn that glucose much quicker when you have higher levels of thyroxin. This is all something that you're going to see in the next topic when you look at, I think it's seven different... Uh, anterior pituitary hormones. Okay, so we haven't discussed this. You probably haven't seen this yet, but we're just going to go over it in the capacity of negative feedback. So the deal here is high levels of this thyroxin, once this has been detected, or actually once it completes its job, and its job is to increase metabolism. And we might want to do that in response to fight and flight, right? We want to burn that energy and get the ATP energy faster. So once that job is completed, though, we have to find a way to, uh, to shut down thyroxin and get it back into homeostasis. So high levels again, and let's just do our dotted line on the side, is detected by the hypothalamus. And I'm going to keep my dotted line going over here. Okay. Hypothalamus in this case, now this is negative feedback that we're going to discuss here. The hypothalamus then sends a inhibitor hormone and inhibiting hormone is exactly like it sounds it's going to send a message to the anterior pit of course we mean the pituitary i'm just going to abbreviate it and the anterior pituitary says let's stop the production of tsh once you have a decrease in thyroid stimulating hormone no message goes to the Thyroid, and the thyroid stops releasing thyroxin. And again, this is how we maintain our balance of thyroxin levels. Again, balance homeostasis. So negative feedback, you can do this for every single hormone that we talk about. Uh, because once that, again, once that hormone has completed its job, we have to have a mechanism, a shut off mechanism uh, to keep it from, uh, uh, keep it into balance. Okay, so that's negative feedback. Now, TSH, is it a, uh, a tropic hormone? Well, it is, right? Because hypothalamus, RH, pituitary releases TSH, TSH, causes another gland, in this case the thyroid gland, to release another hormone, in this case thyroxin. So whenever you get these type of questions, the best way to do it is just fill in this information and then even before you get to the question, and you will see a couple of examples like this. So again, releasing hormone, pituitary, just fill in what hormone is, hormone 2 is. That would be in the case of metabolism, uh, TSH which targets, fill all this stuff in in your question when you see this, targets the thyroid. What is the thyroid release? Hormone three would be thyroxin. And then what does thyroxin do? It increases metabolism, right? Burning that energy quicker so we can get that ATP uh, demand met when we're in fight and flight or something like that. So good strategy, fill all these things right in your question. And then when you go actually to the actual choices, it's going to make a lot more sense. Okay, I think that's everything. If you have any issues with negative feedback or tropic hormones, uh, just give me an email and we can, uh, we can address it further if we need to. Okay, thank you.